Well, today we are adding a pot of gold cookie jar to our cookie jar collection. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, since today's cookie jar is a little sh one of the shorter ones, we are starting with a strip of paper that is a half inch wide by about four-ish inches long, and I'm going to wrap it around a permanent marker. This, is, this one's a Bic marker, a Sharpie pen will work. You want something about that diameter. And our first step is the same as we do pretty much every time we do one of these cookie jars is we, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm making a mark so that I don't put glue too far down. I don't want to glue it to my pen. I like to re, I like to pre-roll it a little bit just so that the paper will roll nicely. I find if I do this, I don't generally need to um, use my scissors or anything to roll it. Now, glue on the inside but not past that pencil line. I'm going to use a toothpick to spread it out and get rid of that little lump of dried glue. And then on the opposite side, right at the end, this paper you'll you won't see very much of it. You'll see the inside of it. You might see the very top of the rim of it. Pull it nice and tight around your pen. Try to get the layers adhered really well. And then I like to take it off. And now this does need to dry. So I'm going to set it off to the side, let it dry. And when that's dry, I'll come back and we'll start building a cookie jar around it. All right, so now that the glue on our cardboard, our cardstock base has dried, now it's time to start doing the building up of the shape of our cookie jar using some inex less expensive original Sculpey. This is a white clay. It's not a great quality clay, but it works just fine for what we're doing. And the first thing I'm going to do while I've got this rolled into somewhat of a round shape, make sure it fits in there. And I'm going to cut a little short, stubby, round piece. Make sure it's still going to fit. And this then can be moved right to my baking surface. Um, that is what we're going to build our lid on. So now let's roll out some clay. And I don't want a very thick piece of clay right now. I want just something I can build on. So I'm going to cut this. And make sure I have enough first. Then I'm going to take some TLS, some translucent liquid Sculpey. And this acts as a glue, a, adhering our clay to our cardstock. We're also going to use TLS as we make our cookie jar to adhere the new pieces of raw clay to our pieces of clay that we have baked. Because when we make our cookie jar, we bake it multiple times. That's going to be fine. Okay. Looks like I've got a little bit of yellow clay on there, but that's okay because it's all going to be hidden anyway. Make sure the seam is nice and clean. Make sure the top looks nice. I'm going to kind of slice off, making sure I have this even with the top of my little cardstock tube. Get the bottom nice and cleaned up. Oops. Oh, that's okay because this is going to be covered. 
All right, well now let's roll this out just a little thinner. Put this on there. We're already getting a nice little short stubby shape to our cookie jar. Now since I'm putting raw clay to raw clay here on the bottom, I don't need to use the TLS. Raw clay will adhere to raw clay when you bake it, but when you put it onto anything else, you'll need to use the TLS. Now, we're going to do one more thing on this one. I'm going to roll a snake. Because this is our filler clay, so we can use it to start our shape. That way when we get our black clay, which is, it costs a little more. I mean, face it, that's, clay gets expensive. I know that. Um, this way we'll have our shape already somewhat started. I'm going to cut a nice line there. Bring this over. Cut it. Whoops, that was not what I wanted to do, but that's okay. We can fix it. It's still raw clay. Now, and this doesn't need to be perfectly seamless. It doesn't need to be, you know, perfect, but I'm going to try and get it as smooth as I can and get it into the beginnings of my shape. I'm going to get out some cornstarch. Just dip my finger into some cornstarch, and now I'm going to It's round, so it wants to roll as a ball. I want to roll it just that direction. Now, you can leave some lumps in this layer. That being said, the smoother this is, the better, because it will make your next layer easier to get smooth. I see that my bottom is kind of poking up, so I want to make it flat again. There, that's a little better. I can fill that in with some more white clay when I come back after it bakes. All right, I am going to go bake this. I'm going to bake it for a full 15 minutes at the recommended time and at recommended temperature. And when it's baked and cooled back to room temperature, I'm going to bake this too, we will come back and we will start working on the outside of our cookie jar. All right, so these pieces are baked and cooled, and I've gone, gone ahead and rolled out my black clay. I conditioned it and rolled it out. This is Primo in black. Any black clay will work. And I've rolled it out pretty thin. We don't want it very thick. So I'm going to, let's see, do I want, like, yeah, we can cover the bottom too. That will solve our problem of our bottom not being flat. So I'm going to cover the outside of my cookie jar in TLS again. Remember, TLS will work as a glue and help our unbaked clay stick to our baked clay. It's not, it's not open all the way. That's what's wrong. All right. And by the way, this was a really, my clay was really stiff this morning. To make it condition a little faster, I mixed a little TLS into it. It won't hurt it, and it will help it to mix faster. So if you're having problems with your clay, getting it to work to condition, go ahead and 
throw a couple of drops of TLS into it. I'm just going to pull this up. And it's going to look messy at first. We're going to cut away the excess. We're going to smooth it. Now we get to guess where the top of our cookie jar is. Did I guess correctly? And it doesn't hurt the clay to have the TLS in it, so that can it can go right back into the package. And I rolled my clay a little thicker than I wanted it because I knew that by the process of getting this stretched over, my cookie jar will actually thin it out. And I didn't want to thin it out to the point where the white was showing through. using my knife here to cut this even with the top of the cookie jar because I don't want to have a I don't want to have this running over the top edge of that white. I want to be able to see that I have a white lining and I want the top to be fairly neat in case anyone ever takes the lid off our cookie jar and looks at it. I want it to look pretty neat in there. look at this and see how it looks. That looks like a pot of gold. So, the ones that I saw online that I thought were awfully cute had little feet. So we are going to roll a small snake. three pieces. Actually, I'm going to do four. I'm going to cheat and put four feet under this because I think it'll be easier to make it not tippy with four. I think most of the ones online had three, but we're going to deviate a little. Make sure I'm staying under camera. Even after all these years, I still sometimes forget I'm filming and I try to move my stuff over where I can actually see what I'm doing. Now let's make sure he stands. Mm. Now he's standing straight. Now, I want to see how big a round that is in comparison. Yes. I've got my one inch cutter here and I'm going to start my lid also. Flip it upside down. Do your best to get this part into the center. I will double check that more closely after I'm off camera where I can put my head over it. Now these need to be baked at the recommended temperature for 10 full minutes so that the TLS can cure. And when that is cured and cooled back to room temperature, we will continue working on our cookie jar. 
All right, our pieces are all baked and cooled to room temperature. So now it's time to start working on our lid. So first, make sure your lid is going to fit. Um, it's a little tight, so I it seems to be catching right here. So it's okay to go in and just trim off a little bit of that clay. I should have tried it before I put the black on it, and I completely forgot it. Normally I do. Okay, that's fine now. So now we are going to start working on our coins that are going to go on the top. And I have this bright yellow clay. I've tried several things this morning, kind of experimenting to pick out what I wanted to do to make my little um, coins for the top, because I want to have a little pile of coins. And this is what worked out the best. So I'm going to, and this is all of this clay I have. I don't even know what color this is. It's like this little bit of clay I have stuck in my stash that's been there forever. And uh, yeah, it's, I'm gonna make this the right size and then I'm going to make sure I've got enough. So I'm gonna do this right now, but I'm not gonna glue this first. I'm going, or glue this, I'm not gonna bake this right away. I'm going to bake some coins to put on here, but I wanted to make sure I had enough reserve that I could do this. So there. Now, I'm going to set that to the side, and I'm going to make just a very thin snake. And I won't make you watch me do all of this. I'm going to make a whole bunch of little flat disks. And since I don't have a cutter the right size, I'm going to cut a bunch of little balls and then I'm going to roll them out to little tiny balls. I should put my paper plate over here first. Put them there and flatten them. They don't have to be perfect because they're only going to show a, a little bit. We'll pick the best looking ones to put where they show the most. So I am going to create a big pile of coins here, and when they are done and they have baked and cooled, I will come back and we will attach them to our lid. And don't worry about the color, that's going to change. This was my best option. I've tried one, two, three, four, five, six different clays to get what I wanted to get the color and the effect I'm looking for. So I'll be back when I have these coins made and finished. All right, I've got my coin pieces all baked. I am going to add a little more clay to the top of this since I have more clay left. The reason I put this on, I don't remember if I mentioned it, I was just afraid I would run out of clay and I need to have a little bit on the top here. Uh, not that much. I could have gotten by with just that part if I had to, but it will be nice to have a little extra. So now I'm just kind of smoothing that on, and now, hopefully I've got enough coins made. I'm not positive I do. And I wanted to leave this unbaked until I got the coins on, as much as possible anyway, in case I want to indent them in a little bit. I mean, I might bake this, if this gets too, um, to the point where I can't put these on without everything moving, then I will probably go ahead and bake it to get it started to cure, and then come back. I'm trying not the label on my TLS is coming off. I'm trying to clean that off. I really don't want TLS showing on my lid on the black part. So I am going to work my way around this lid, just continuing to put coins, 
kind of on here. And I'm going to kind of push them down so they look like they're laying on top of each other, not standing straight up and down. But I do want to leave some rim of black around. And I think I'm going to get all the way around once and then I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to bake the first baking of it. Then I'll come back and show you how far I got before I decided to bake it. And I'll show you how we add on as we keep going. So I'll be back here to show you some progress in a sec. All right, I've got my coins finished. I had this many left of what I made. So that is all done now. So now it's time to paint these a better color of gold. And I am going to, well, first I'm going to put this on too. I've got a craft stick with some poster tack. And I'm going to push this down on. I'm going to move the camera down and hopefully I can stay underneath camera. See, I've got them, and they look like they're laying on top of each other. Avoid putting them vertically. You want them to look like they're kind of laying on top of each other. Now, I have some of this brushed metal in brushed gold that Plaid sent me, and it's the perfect color to make these look like coins. I had four different colors of gold clay that I tried to use to make coins, and they just didn't look as good as this does. This combination of the bright yellow with the gold paint over it works really well. So I am going to and try to avoid getting it on the black. Um, I'm going to probably turn the camera off to do most of this, but I'm going to paint all of these and do a very thin coat. The secret worth working with metallic paints, thin, even coats. You might need a, I might need a second coat and you may or may not need a second coat depending on the look you're after and we'll decide that when this dries but don't try to put metallic colors especially on too thickly when you put them on too thick they get very gloppy and very uneven the color looks very it looks more streaky then it's easier to make even coats if you put thin coats on that you layer. So I am going to finish painting all my little coins and all the visible yellow clay. And when that's done and dried, we will come back. We will look and see if we need a second coat and move on. All right, I'm really happy with this with just one coat. Um, because the clay was yellow to begin with, you can just kind of see that peeking through, just that color kind of peeking through in areas, and it really makes this look the way I wanted it to. So, now it's time to put a very thin coat of Mod Podge. Now, because I need to do the bottom, whoops, let's, let's back you up just a little bit. There we go. Because I need to do the bottom of the cookie jar itself, I've got a little bit of poster tack here. Oops, a little too fat. I'm going to push that up in there so that now this will stay on this pencil. I don't have to worry about it falling off and getting messed up. So I am going to get, yeah, I guess I'll just put it on the tray. Put just a little bit of gloss Mod Podge out. Now this is gloss. This was also this and the paint out. If I mention it, the brushes were provided by Plaid. Um, now, when you're doing Mod Podge, especially gloss on polymer clay or on anything else, because I have found the same to be true on all kinds of crafts, gloss Mod Podge needs to be a very thin coat. If you want more, put on a second thin coat. Don't try to put on a, a thick coat because that's when there are curing problems and that's when it stays sticky. And it's a little trickier on polymer clay than on other surfaces, but given a thin coat, most of the time it will dry fine. Um, I'm going to brush off some of this because I've got a little more on than I want. So let's go 
ahead and get started here. Now we don't want to put any any Mod Podge on this top layer or on the bottom of the lid because we don't want those pieces to stick together later and we also don't want to add any bulk and that could add just the tiniest bit of bulk. Those areas won't show so they are fine, just matte. You can see I'm putting a very, very thin coat. Uh, there are other acrylic gloss coats that you can use, and I might start shopping for some. I haven't decided, but the Mod Podge was provided to me, and I was already using Mod Podge for this. So, all right. So I'm going to let these dry completely, and when they are com after I get this coat a little more even. And once they are dry, we will look at our cookie jar all put together. So I'll be right back. All right, my Mod Podge is dry, so check that out of there. Get this out of here. And we have a cookie jar that looks like a pot of gold. As I mentioned in the blog post, you could write pot of gold on the front or any put a decoration, maybe a shamrock. It's up to you. I decided to go simple, but you can definitely up the ante on your decoration on this. But I just love the simple one, and I think we're going to revisit this shape maybe at Halloween and make a witch's cauldron. I think that would be fun, too. Maybe I'll work on this shape and get it a little more refined before then. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure and hit the like button and leave me a comment. What kinds of cookie jars would you like to see or other projects? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you to hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video. Uh, be sure and check the blog post for photos and more information, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.